my name is Uncle Chen, uh, CEO of Token Minds, uh, and I'm joined here today by my colleague uh, Kel. Welcome, Kel. Hey, everyone. Uh, and also our guest today is Edgar, so our tech team manager, and he will illustrate further about the wormhole technology. Welcome, Ed, to join the podcast. Hi, everyone. All right, thank you, guys. So, uh, okay, uh, uh, so let's let's actually work through, right? So, first, a question for Edgar. So, uh, we all know that's a wormhole uh, technology, right? It's quite uh, quite new solution for the cross chain, the multiple uh, multi chain, right? Solutions. How? But can you actually let us know, like, how exactly does it work? Like, how does wormhole blockchain work? Okay, so. Uh... Actually, uh, initially the wormhole protocol was created as a token bridge, uh, allowing token transfers transfers between different blockchains, uh, most particularly between Solana and Ethereum. But uh, then they continued developing it and re- released the wormhole version two that turned it into a uh, interoperability layer, which chains and decentralized applications can easily build on. So. The, a, how it works is uh, wormhole transactions uh, begins at the emitter where uh, any contracts that calls the, uh, the publish message method in the wormhole core contract uh, this writes an event to the transaction logs where uh, all the it records all the details of the emitters that call the method in uh, it also contains the uh, sequence number as an identifier. Uh, then the the score contract uh, is monitored by a set of validators known as the, the guardians, which then processes the message when it is published. Uh, in uh, wormhole has this uh, off chain where off off chain where the all the processes are being done and all the uh, transactions are being validated by the guardians. Uh, uh, at its core, the wormhole is a, a secured peer-to-peer network made up of these, uh, as mentioned, the, the guardian nodes, which uh, then uh, validates and sign the messages passing through the wormhole. Uh, these messages written to the core contracts are picked up by this network of guardians and if a majority of 13 out of these 19 guardians sign the same message then the message is deemed as uh, as valid uh, so then uh, these signed messages are known and very uh, as the verified action for approvals or also known as the VAAs and then these messages are then relayed to their destination protocol which is the uh, the target chain where uh, it will be processed so yeah I think uh, that's basically it how a wormhole works so it, it be, uh, in simple terms, uh, the 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 source chain calls the uh, core contracts of the wormhole, and then it is being validated in off chain by the guardians inside the uh, wormhole network, and then it's being uh, tra- uh, transferred to the relayer for the in the uh, target chains. Okay, so yeah, uh, again, so how does Wormhole differentiate itself from other cross-chain bridges in the market? And what specific problem does it solve better than its competitors? Um, so in terms of token bridge, uh, usually when, uh, we, when we transfer from one chain to another, uh, you usually see routes right, in jumping from different uh, tokens. For instance, uh, when you want to transfer Ethereum to uh, Binance, the the route will be from ETH. For, uh, this is a, just an example. From the route will be ETH uh, to USDC or USDT, then go to uh, then to BSC, right? So, but 
for wormhole as long as the token is supported uh, the process goes like uh, from source chain for instance uh, ethereum then wormhole and target chain which is uh, binance so it shortens the transfers of the token uh, for uh, the specific problem uh, the problems that usually solve us for uh, but better than other competitors um, right right now I don't think wormhole has any competitors yet as far as I know because wormhole is more than just a bridge so uh, it is a messaging protocol that uh, allows different blockchains to communicate with each other so imagine the possibilities of that if different blockchains can communicate so yeah I hope that answers your question. Yeah, it, it does. Yeah, thank you for that. So for a follow-up question, if I am a project owner, so what do you think, like what partnerships and integrations can be explored to expand um, the wormhole reach and utility? Mm, for uh, instance, uh, you can probably uh, utilize the wormhole as you said for uh, transferring NFTs in different chains, so it could probably uh, benefit all the DApps that uh, that operates in different chains, and also uh, it can uh, enables it can enable cross-chain governance uh, for pro- uh, for all the protocols that operates in different chains. You usually just uh, decide which will be the governance chain and then all other uh, chain can uh, vote in that governance gover- uh, governance chain by using uh, wormhole all right okay yeah i think that's it for me for now thanks ed okay thank you ed uh, that's really uh sounds very fantastic so uh you already explained a lot about the wormhole technology that uh, and also the applies right in the blockchain so we know that wormhole connects blockchain networks right by, by wrapping data into uh, messages from the source blockchain which actually uh, it emits to the destination blockchain via system that is governed by like 90 validators so another question that is wormhole decentralized and encrypted um wormhole is the most uh, decentralized form of bridge right now and uh some uh the guardians makes that happen uh, guardian is a large uh crypto institution that monitors the core contracts for wormhole and uh, in, in each of the different uh, chains. Currently, there are 19 guardians and they are formed from different uh, top validator companies in the world, including Course One, P2P Validator, Figment, and any other more. Okay, thank you, Edgar, for the explanation. I think uh, for us, for sure, we know more about uh, the, the solution and the technology. And for sure, um, and thank you, Care and Edgar both for the magnificent podcast and your knowledge based sharing. I think it's quite useful for us, our audiences. So if you have any questions, right, you can always contact Token Minds, right? Uh, we are actually glad to provide you free consultation. And also let's discuss further about the Web3 technology in the next episode. Uh, so thank you, everyone. Mm-hmm.